So since we're trying to find the inverse, we'll switch our x and y. So that'll give us x equals 3y minus 8 divided by 7y plus 4. And then we have to get rid of the division. So we'll multiply both sides by the denominator, the 7y plus 4, so we can eliminate that division. So over here, we'll multiply by 7y plus 4. can barely fit it. And then let me write that down one step below. That gives me 7y plus 4 times x, I'll just put them both in parentheses so I remember that I'm multiplying, equals 3y minus 8. So at this point, some, some people think they're going to divide by x, but the problem is you have y's on both sides of the equation. You've got a 7y here on the left and you have this 3y on the right. And so you don't want to divide by x because all that's going to do is just move x to the other side. It doesn't help you isolate y. So instead, you want to go ahead and distribute. I think of it like that's the only way I'm going to get this y out of the parentheses, out of jail, if you will. So if I distribute, that's going to be 7yx plus 4x equals 3y minus 8. At this point, I like to count how many terms I have all together. So if I count terms, I have 7yx, that's one term, then 4x is a second term, 3y is its own term, and then the minus 8 is a fourth term. And the reason why I like to count how many terms I have is because then I can keep track of which of the terms have a y in it. So I have two terms that contain a y, so I want to get those terms on the same side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract the 3y, which will be 7yx minus 3y, but then I want to also move this 4x term to the other side because it does not contain a y. So I'm going to subtract the 4x to the other side, so that'll be a negative 8 minus 4x. And then what that lets me do with the terms on the left side is they both have a y in common. So this is a greatest common factor. We have a GCF, basically, so now we're going to factor out a y. And then we'll be left with 7x minus 3. And now we successfully got both of the y's on the same side and we've factored out the y. So finally we can divide by the 7x minus 3 to isolate y. So the inverse, we always want to go back and make sure you remember to use the original inverse notation. The inverse will be negative 8 minus 4x all divided by 7x minus 3. So then we also want to find the domain and the range for this inverse. So let's start with the domain of this inverse. Because we have a fraction, we know that the denominator of a fraction cannot equal 0. So we'll set 7x minus 3 equal to 0 and solve, and that'll tell me the value that I cannot have for x. So 7x cannot equal 3, and if I divide by 7, x cannot equal 3 sevenths. So my domain for the inverse will be all numbers except for 3 sevenths. So negative infinity to 3 sevenths, union 3 sevenths to infinity. However, the range is much harder to figure out for the inverse, and we could spend some time graphing, graphing the inverse if we wanted to, but that's going to be time consuming. So it would be better for us to realize that the range of the inverse is going to be the same as the domain of the original. Oh, and I'm noticing the original function on this one was actually marked as g of x, so I should have down here at the bottom, you guys, I should have marked my inverse instead of the inverse of f, it really should be the inverse of g. Let me fix that. So the inverse of g, just to be consistent with my notation. So we're trying to find the range of the inverse, which will be the same as the domain of the original, and if I look at the original function, it is also a fraction, so we have the same restriction that the denominator cannot equal 0. So we'll set 7x plus 4 equal to 0 and solve. So 7x cannot equal negative 4, therefore x cannot equal negative 4 sevenths. So my domain is going to be negative infinity to negative 4 sevenths, union negative 4 sevenths to infinity, and that will be then the range of my inverse. So negative infinity to negative 4 sevenths, union negative 4 sevenths to infinity will be the domain and the range there for the inverse function.